Hello everybody and welcome in this video tutorial uh, which uh, will help you to understand how volumetric lights work uh, in Poser and uh, in uh, the products called Crime Scene Analysis. All right. So um, if you are using Poser 9 and above versions, uh, you will be able to load it using this little icon scene. So let's call Scientific Police the place where I have installed my content. You have V3D crime scene analysis. And in this crime scene analysis uh, folder, you can find three different lights corresponding to three dif different colors of beam. A white light is for standard flashlights, and these two blue lights are for um, police the blue police lights that um, uh, forensic police is you are using for um, to in order to to lighten and to find blood in a, in in crime scenes. Okay, so if you just double click on it, it won't work. Let me show you. I double click. Okay, here I have my spotlight, my lamp, my flashlight in black, and here a prop in order to see the beam. So I have double clicked. I just make a render. Ah, it's loading texture, but there, there are not a lot of textures, and nothing happens. Why? Because volumetric lights depend on atmosphere. Here. In material, if I have a look at my atmospheres, I think I see that there is no volume on for atmosphere. It's because that when you load just like that the scene in Poser, uh, it doesn't take the atmosphere settings. So what do you have to do? Take a new file. For Poser 9 and above, you have to not import scene, but load it as a new scene, as you can see here. So load as a new scene. Uh, no, don't change the scene. Don't see the changes. Here you don't see any difference, yet there is a big difference. Now if I make a render of this area, it will take a little bit longer, but you will see the shape of the beam in the in the atmosphere, you you will see just like um, the little dust in atmosphere were visible. You see the whole shape of the light beam. Okay, you see the difference. I'm gonna wait till the end of the render, or at least till we see almost all, all the beam. So you see the beam coming from the flashlight and going on this prop. Now I have opened Poser 8, okay? In Poser 8, you see all this icon, you don't have the icon that allows you to load a scene. So you have to do it differently. You have to make file, open, and go in, okay, in the place you have installed your content. You go in the runtime, Libraries, Scene, V3D for V3D times, Crime Scene Analysis, and here you find your lights. Let's now load, for instance, the white light. And you have to make open. You have to make open in a clean new scene. Okay? Now I make open. All right, and logically, I should be able to see my beam in the scene. Let's have a try. It's rendering. I'm sorry, it's with atmospherics it's always a bit longer and with bother H2. Alright, so we see the the spot on the wall, but we begin to see the beam in the atmosphere. So the presets I made are for Poser 9 and above. Okay, now uh, 
if you find, and that's what I find that for Purser 8, it is too, too powerful as an effect. You have different ways to solve this problem. Okay, I can't sell the render. First thing, go in material, choose atmosphere, and in volume density, you can lower this volume density. For instance, I'm gonna try 0.1. It should reduce the atmospheric effect, the atmosphere effect. So let's have a little try. It should be faster now that the textures are loaded. So logically, it should be less visible, less powerful. I'm gonna let the, land, the render do a little bit more of his job and we are going to compare. Okay, it's obvious that it's less powerful. I'm gonna cancel the render and just compare the two renders. You see, you can, uh, you can have an adjustment using in a material the strength of the volume density. All right, uh, so that is the way you will have to load the scene, the scene in Poser 8 and below versions of Poser. Now I'm gonna give you some more tips and tricks to be more, to feel more comfortable with these atmosphere settings. All right, I'm back in Poser Pro, uh, Poser Pro, uh, 2012, that is. And I go in my scene, scientific police, and I open this light blue, for instance, always using load as a new scene. Not changing, saving the changes. Okay, why this ugly prop? Why this ugly prop? It's because you have to put, you, you, you no, it's, that's not. You have to have your beam between your camera, my camera, and uh, a background. If you don't have the background, so I take my fog cube visible. It is made to, to have the, a visible fog cube. If I make it invisible and I launch a render, what do I see? Just my uh, hand flashlight, okay? But no beam. I make it visible back again, render again, and this time, I see the light beam. Here I have put a prop in order for people to test directly this, this effect. Now you can remove this prop, delete, okay, and uh, load uh, another environment. Um, I'm gonna take something that I know pretty well because I have created it. Okay, this is uh, the room, uh, the parent is here, okay, and I'm gonna translate it along it. all right. Now, I have another prop which is not, um, which is not the, the initial cube uh, I had, it, it is a new prop. The, I just want to show you that you have to I have a background here to see the effect, whatever the background it is. It must be a visible background, otherwise your effect won't work. So let's have a try with another background. Oh, it's loading the texture once again. I should have done before. It shouldn't be that long. I hope. Okay. It's rendering. It's a little bit longer because these are high res texture for most of them. So do we see the beam? We see the image of the beam on the, the wall. We see a little bit the beam. For the next render, I'm going to lower my uh, 
my render settings so that we can go faster. But I just want to show you that we see the beam and how to change the the value of what you see and the appearance of what you see. Okay, you see here the beginning of the beam. You see here the dots, <coughs> the spots of the spot on the wall. You see here the little points simulating uh, dust in uh, the atmosphere. All right. And uh, these dots can be changed because I have applied a texture um, and mixed it with a, a black or dark color. And so that if you change the blending ratio of this texture and the black color, you, you will have a more or less important effect. Um, I'm going to show you this as soon as this very slow render will finish. I will immediately show you how to decrease the time of the render also. Okay, so it's obvious that now we, we have a beam in the atmosphere. Okay, so you can, what, what can you do? You can totally dis disable the beam. Let's go in atmosphere, switch off volume on, and I'm going to change my render settings because, uh, oh, I was already there. What's important is to have shadows. I am going to remove that and that and keep ray tracing. Three pixel samples. I'm going to increase a little bit the shading rates. Okay. Save setting. It should be a little bit faster. So now, I have disabled atmosphere, and if I disable atmosphere, you see, you have the image of the spot on the wall, but you don't have the atmosphere effect. Now I'm going to re-enable atmosphere, have a look at how long it takes to render, and show you how you can render faster. Oh, it's immediately much longer. I'm, I won't wait till the end, I just want to see the top of the beam. Okay. So I'm gonna stop when the render is approximately on this line, so that we can see something. Okay, we're near, near the end. I'm ready to press cancel. Ready, ready, ready. Next line and it's okay. So you see, it's necessarily long to calculate with atmos volumetric atmosphere. But you can go in material and change your volume step size. Here I'm gonna take 0.9 for instance. And try, if I increase it, I'm going to try a new render. And oh, it's going much, much, much faster. Yes, and it's pretty nice. Except that yeah, here you have, um, how you have holes in your, um, in your, in your render, in your light beam. So, um, this parameter here, volume step size, is, go is going to tell to poser the distance of the planes that are used to calculate volumetric lights. Because volumetric lights is, cal is calculated by inserting... I, 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 I briefly sum up, sum, sum up what's happening. It's, it's putting planes, vertical planes, between the beam between the the source and uh, and uh, and uh, the end of the of the props which receives lights, and uh, the distance of this plane uh, is determined by the volume step size. Here, all that night it was too much, 
I can take 0.6 for instance and see if I have my if I still have my holes here. But you see it's already much faster than 0.1. Okay, I still have my holes. 0.3 all the three is enough for a render at this distance. Okay, and is much faster than all the one. Now, uh, the thing is that it is going to depend on the distance of your camera to uh, to your light beam. Uh, we are going to keep the setting of the three and to check that at this distance it is enough. And now we're going to have a look at what we make a little. You see, at this at this distance it is okay. Now we, if we want to focus a little bit more on the flash lamp. We will see that it won't be enough. So I'm focusing here. So I placed my focus here. All right. And I'm keeping uh, oh, the three volume step size and make a rapid render here. And you will see that you can see this time the whole suit because um, the camera is closer. So uh, what was right for a far distance camera is not right for a close distance camera. So that, that is why in my preset I am at 0.1. Okay, but if you make a larger framing of your camera, you can easily increase this tape in order to have faster renders. You see, I could, here there's still a little hole, I could decrease the volume step size, but uh, people will then be annoyed in most situations uh, because of the render time and this uh, is not useful. So if you want to completely remove these holes, you can still decrease volume step size for close-ups, but you can keep uh, all the three for um, for larger, um, large, bigger distance of cameras. All right, I have reloaded my initial scene and to, sh to, to, sh to show you um, one or more two things. So in my uh, basic scene, I have the fog cube visible prop and I have also a remove me light, which is only useful to see the, the whole environment at, um, at the since the beginning. You don't have to keep this light. You can develop your own lighting. What is really important in all the lights that you're going to add is to put the atmosphere strength of the light to zero. Otherwise, it will give you a kind of foggy atmosphere everywhere in, everywhere in your scene. It will make your render times explode, literally explode. And um, you could even have a kind of solid, uh, solid color uh, image, a kind of gray image or blue image, for instance. Uh, 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 ex uh, but you, you won't have your render. Well, by default, when you create, and I'm going to remove this light, okay? Yes, remove me light. Okay, here you see exactly why you need this light uh, in the in my basic scene. Now, if I am adding an object, for instance, an infinite light. Okay, I'm adding this infinite light, and by default, in the light one properties, I see that atmosphere strength is not at zero. If I put it, for instance, at one. And well, oh, be ready and launch a launch render. What's happening? Oh, you have something very strange. You see, it's uh, how to define this. It's a whole white solid color, um, white and blue. It's no. It's it's not uh, working the way you want. If you're putting the atmosphere strength to zero, 
and launch a render. Here you see your prop. Bef previously you didn't see your prop because um, it was hidden behind the atmospheric volumetric light planes, uh, roughly speaking. Okay, so what's really important is as soon as you create a light, you can configure it afterwards the way you want, as you're used to do it. But what is really important is here to have the atmosphere strength to zero, and by default, it won't be zero. Okay, uh, I must be in a shadow map, I think. Uh, because of this little square where, where you see some artifacts like that. It's probably because the property is depth shadow map. If I take a ray trace shadow, it should disappear. Let's have a look. Shadow map is a nice configuration, but I don't use it frequently because so it tends to produce artifacts. You see, I just put a ray trace shadow ex uh, instead of shadow map and it has disappeared. Now I'm going to take my depth map shadow again and sometimes strange artifacts uh, appear because of casting shadows of things that you don't want or don't anticipate to cast shadow. Okay, so if, if you see an artifact, it's not a, it's a general uh, advice. Uh, take a ray trace, it's a little bit longer, but I really prefer it. All right, so th this was the advice. Any new light, point light, spotlight, IBL must be configured to have a zero atmosphere strength, except if you want to produce uh, some uh, funny uh, effects. Uh, no, I, I, the scene is not is not the right scene to to show other atmospheric effects. You can cre create if you want other. Uh, um, other other spots object create light spots. If you want to have a, to have effects, you can create a new spots, and uh, you will have a, a new atmospheric effects uh, if it's your goal. But uh, generally, generally in your things, I think that you won't want to uh, to mix uh, too many. Uh, atmospheric uh, and volumetric effects because uh, it's uh, the, t the render times go faster and faster, uh, longer and longer. Sorry, I was watch I was watching the render to see what what was happening. Yes. Okay, you see. So why uh, is the um, okay? This is why is the spot white and the atmosphere blue? Okay, here I have a blue spot and a blue uh, a blue atmosphere, but here I have a white spot and a white atmosphere. So for this, you can go in still atmosphere. At the volume color is of atmosphere is by default blue. I could I can change it for a nice pink, for instance, and this time you will have nice pink atmospheres. I'm gonna increase the step size because uh, step size. Oh, dot night. Here we are not. Uh, I just want to show you things. I don't want to lose time, and I don't want you to lose your time. Okay. Okay. So here we're uh, pink. Why? Because the this spotlight here is white. Here we are violet because we are mixing the blue of the spot with the pink of atmosphere. You can change the spot. And uh, what if we mix? Let's make a yellow and the yellow of the spot and the pink of the atmosphere. Uh, who guess? This is a contest. Who guessed what gives a mix of yellow and pink? It gives a really strange color between orange and pink. That's it. Okay, so you 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 can play like that <coughs> with your colors, uh, mixing atmosphere colors and um, and uh, and spot colors. Hello. So lights, flash spotlight, 
I'm gonna take pure white for everybody. Okay, I'm going back to atmosphere. Here for atmosphere uh, configuration, I have blended uh, an image called Frog that I have created um, to a black color. Now it is a very small blending. Now you can play also with it to change literally completely the, um, the aspect of it. So I'm gonna take one, take one and have a look of, to what's happening. Take one. Whoa, it's dusty. It's um, it's almost surrealistic. I'm gonna remove this beam, which is annoying me. Up, oh, stop here. Remove. Okay, delete the beam. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and if you put it to the atmosphere strength, if you put it to zero, okay, you won't see at all the effect of the map, and you will find the default, the default poser atmosphere. So now you can play, you can uh, play the the way you want to uh, to change the effect of the strength of the kind of dust in atmosphere. Now, if you like that, but you think that the, these little dust points are too big, you can rescale uh, your map, for instance, by a factor 10. Okay, and render again. Oh, is it really visible? Hmm. It's not that visible. Uh, what could I do, Crisp? Um, maybe it is not. Ah, uh, maybe it depends of the render settings. It can see lower because this one is not really different from this one. I have the intuition that it's approximately the same, and I have the feeling. Yeah, that it depends. See? Yes, it's almost the same thing. Maybe if we go in render settings and shading rates, very low. Save settings. Uh, now let's see if we can have a difference. The shading rate, um, of course, when you decrease it, it's going to increase your render time, but it's globally gives you the size of the detail that you can see. So low shading rate, you can see very small details. Okay, now I cancel. And I'm gonna try to reduce this size. Of the fog in the map to see if the difference is visible. Yes, it is. So, um, this is a general advice once again. If you have very small details in space, what, whenever they are on the textures or in the lights, you have to decrease your shading rate for them to be visible. Here you see the difference. I have rescaled my map. When the shading rate was too high in the render settings, I couldn't see the difference because the dif because the let's say the textures, the details of the texture applied was uh, limited by the shading rate. Here it is not limited anymore and you see the difference. Okay, and now this time you, you can increase or decrease the strength of this volumetric um, noise. So here it is almost not, not apparent, you almost don't see it. Okay, but of course when decreasing shading rate you increase your render times. Okay, it is almost not apparent and here it is, well it should be important, it will be very visible. So that's what the shading rate parameter is used for. See, there, there is a lot of beams, there are a lot of dusts in atmosphere, a lot of very small dusts. So you can play with this scale to rescale the, the 
the effect of the dust density in the air. You can say you can play with this blending. Okay, it's I made it pretty small because I don't want to see too much dust. You can increase or decrease volume density. Okay, this will give you a much higher or lower effect. You can change the volume step size. Higher values um, are okay for decreasing run the times, but you may see holes. Ah, let's take three. You may see holes in your beam. You see at three, I, I'm not even sure I'm, I will see. Okay, here at three, you see the first plane, second plane, and so on. So, uh, and you can um, uh, don't change volume noise. It's always annoying, but you can also create, uh, for instance, other atmospheres. Okay, disconnect this blend, and I'm taking a turbulence just to see what it's given with a volume te step size of 0.6, and a render. And this time you're using pause nodes to change your atmosphere um, atmosphere shape. You see, turbulence is also uh, oh, it's too powerful, but uh, it gives you another profile but of atmospherics um, effects. So here you see it is too powerful, two settings available. First, you can change the pole of your light, for instance, 30% uh, instead of, of 17. So here it would be less visible. Why? Because the lamp is less powerful, but Okay, it's a little bit less visible, but in the circumstance, under these circumstances, the best way is to go once again in atmosphere and reduce the volume density. Let's try that. I think I decreased it too much, but I'm not sure. Is it still visible? Okay, it's working. So I, I gave it I gave my scene by default with the noise that I created myself, but of course you can go in the material atmosphere and replace by any any um, any noise uh, included in uh, in uh, by default in poser. Okay? Uh, that's it. I think that's that's all I want you to say concerning this, so what has to be remembered is um, never load it in a, in, a, in a scene, load it as a new scene, otherwise you will use your atmosphere settings and the volumetric light won't work. If it doesn't work, sometimes sometimes it may, it may be due because it, you don't cast shadow in the render, sometimes not. Sometimes it is due to the fact that you have no prop uh, behind your volume, so you have to add a prop, a background, even even a visible plane. You have something visible. You have to have something be visible um, uh, after your your volume light. And uh, okay, what do I have to mention? Whenever you had, you, whenever you add a new light. Whenever you add a new light, take great care to put it atmosphere trends to zero. All right. And last point is that this lamp, okay, um, is the parent of uh, of the spot. So uh, if to, to be um, if you uh, want to work e easily, you can uh, you can f for a while make it invisible. Okay, and place the lamp in, uh, in M4 hand or something like that, and uh, parent to M4 hand, then place uh, Michael 4, and uh, finally at the end you remake the uh, lights, flashlight spot visible. Oh, it was still visible, okay. And uh, then afterwards you, you make your render and uh, and I think that's all I wanted to... Uh, so the video is not perfect because I'm making it pretty rapidly, but I wanted to to make it 
because it's not obvious uh, at at the beginning to use uh, volumetric lights and there are many traps that you can fall in and I, I am trying to give you the little tips that um, that will allow you to have the best usage uh, of these lamps. So thank you for watching and um, I hope that uh, you will be happy to play with this lamp and uh, have a nice day everybody.